May I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Gospel reading for today is found in the famous chapter of St. Luke's, which contains perhaps the most famous parable in the entire Bible, that of the prodigal son. But it also contains two other parables which illustrate the joy of finding that which is lost. And it also illustrates Christ's loving, searching concern for the single human soul. And it's interesting to know that the parables of the lost sheep and the lost coin share a similar structure and a plot line. Both parables, for example, have an object that is lost. There is a search to find the lost object. There is a recovery. And lastly, there's joy when the lost is found. Now, in the first parable, a shepherd with a flock of a hundred sheep discovers that one of his sheep is missing. Now, he could have said upon learning that one was missing, well, that is the way it goes in this business. Sometimes you are bound to lose one or have one stray once in a while. In the business world, for example, a certain amount of loss is expected to occur. Now, if the shepherd was lazy or tired, that is what he could have said and let it go at that. In the second parable, the housewife could have expressed similar views upon losing one of her ten coins of silver. She could have said, I still have nine left. Why bother to look for it when I am already time out? Why not just forget about it? But neither the shepherd nor the housewife in our gospel passage was so easily discouraged. Leaving the 99 sheep secure in a sheepfold, the shepherd wasted no time in beginning to search for the lost sheep. He scoured the countryside to bring back a sheep that was lost. Patiently and persistently, the shepherd looked everywhere imaginable to find the lost sheep. And so too the woman who lost one of her ten coins searched carefully to find it. And in spite of the darkness and the added difficulty it posed for searching, our reading tells us that she lit a candle and searched in every corner of the house with a broom in an attempt to uncover her lost coin. And then we read in both the parables, the lost sheep and the lost coin, that the diligence of both searchers is rewarded. After a long and tiring search, the shepherd finds the sheep at last far from home, probably in a very isolated and lonely spot, but nevertheless safe, sound, and unharmed. And tenderly, the shepherd takes it up in his arms, he places the sheep on his shoulders, and he carries it back to his main flock, the hundred sheep. The search of the woman was likewise not in vain. After much sweeping and, and searching, for example, she suddenly noticed a shiny object in a far off corner of the house. And sure enough, there was the lost coin she had been looking for. Now, just as Jesus was glad to welcome and eat with tax collectors and with sinners, the shepherd and the woman both celebrate at achieving the ends of their search and their rescue missions. The joy of these two people was so great that they wanted to share it with other people. And so they both call their friends and their neighbors together and say, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Rejoice with me, because I have found the coin which I had lost. So what can you and I take away from these two parables? Now, both these seekers represent God or Jesus in their search for the lost people everywhere. Now, when Jesus told these parables, two very different groups were listening in. One group included the despised tax collectors and the so-called undesirables, the sinners of society. And the second group of people was made up of very religious people, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, which are the scribes. Now, you and I know by now that Jesus and the religious leaders 
never saw eye to eye. As far as the Pharisees were concerned, Jesus spent far too much of his time with the wrong kind of people. The Pharisees saw the tax collectors and sinners as people are lost in a world of sin from which there is no escape. But these were the people who have come to listen to Jesus. For me, they are on the road to repentance, which is a possibility completely lost on the grumbling Pharisees. They didn't realize actually that they too were lost. And so the great shepherd whose love will never let us go, who loves us with an everlasting love, sought and found us, which is one reason that we are here today. You and I meant so much to God, sinners though we are, that he sent his son into the world to seek and to save us. And so Jesus' willingness to associate with low-status people turned out to have a positive impact. Throughout his earthly ministry, Jesus was constantly seeking people out one by one. For example, when he sat at the well and talked with a woman of Samaria, when he befriended the woman that was caught in adultery and he said to her, go and sin no more, when he asked Matthew to follow him from his text collector's booth, and when he called Zacchaeus down from the sycamore tree. Now, many Christians today automatically identify or associate themselves with the 99 sheep or the nine coins. But for me, the point of the story is to recognize that we are all the lost who need to be found, even if we have been obedient sheep. We too were at one point found by God. Maybe for some of you it was the word of God that reached your ear, or the sacrament of baptism lit the light of faith in our hearts and made us children of God and heirs of heaven. So these means of grace Christ found us and brought us back to himself. And so for me, the story is not so much about us or the lost, nor is it about living better lives, but the message is actually about God, a God that will go to any lengths to find what is his and what has been lost. You see, the lost ship cannot unlost itself, just like the lost coin cannot find itself. For both to be found, efforts must be exerted by another. And so God, out of great love for us, commits to the restoration of the loss. God is not going to give up on us. And so God is relentless and will leave no stone unturned, looking for that which has gone astray. And the fact that Jesus would share his life with all types of people, that should give us hope because we are told in the epistle that he, Jesus, came into the world to save sinners. Jesus, the good shepherd, takes delight in the 99 righteous people and he gives them the reassurance of God's love. But he's also willing and able to search for the lost soul. And speaking of being lost and sinful, the Apostle Paul in his first letter to Timothy says, and I quote, that even though he was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence, I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that I in Christ Jesus. In other words, Paul said, I was lost, but now I am found. And so Jesus tells us that the angels of God will rejoice when even one person who is lost is found. And so, friends, may the celebration in heaven be kept, kept raging as God continues to seek and save the lost. Amen.